And welcome back to this relaxing moments right before we die. Ah. Uh, sound like there's someone inside. Indeed, a moment later the door swung open, and Oyana ran out and dashed past with some mischievous grin. The pigtail girl came out next. Don't let it bother you, Lena. So her name is Lena. Gotta be thankful it's not Rena, at least. Oh. Oh my goodness, you just... You just... <laughs> you just misheard it and imagined it? Why? <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, but I don't... So instead of finishing her sentence, she blushed and quickly headed towards the square. For some reason, I felt like turning and following her with my eyes, but Slavia said, Come. We entered the cabin. Inside, it looks similar to what I'd imagine. Two beds, a table, a couple of chairs, some carpet on the floor, and a wardrobe. Nothing special, but at the same time, it felt like, oh, it felt home-like and cozy, although this room was almost in the same state as Disorder's my own flat. I'd also like to point out something particularly fun. Whatever the fuck this is supposed to be. That's just really, really creepy at the moment, honestly. The girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. Okay, apparently you can tell that. I sure as hell can't. What are the ages of any of these people? I don't know. Nature has obviously gifted her with a pretty face and a good body. At least one thing you can keep uh, can keep you happy in this pandemonium. The locals are beautiful. Whatever you say, buddy. You're finally here. Excellent. My name is Oga. I'm the camp leader. Nice to meet you. I'm Semyon. I decided to talk as if I wasn't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We've been expecting you since early morning. You've been expecting me? Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come? Because I... Why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why, why would I need it? Guess I shouldn't ask direct questions. The people here may react to, uh, may react to them quite unlike how I'd prefer. And I doubt I'd get any answers. No reason, just curious. By the way, where are we exactly? Oh, there's a direct question, Semyon. There's a direct question. Our mailing address, I mean. I want to send a letter to my parents to tell them I got here fine. For some reason, I had the desperate idea that if I played along, I would find something out. Oh, but your parents just called a half an hour ago. Sent their regards to you. Oh, well, that's a surprise. Um, so, can I call them? Because I forgot to tell them something before I left. No. She gave me a sweet, spontaneous smile. Uh, why not? We don't have a phone here. Then how did they call? Then how can my parents make a call to here? I just came back from the district's central town. I talked with them there. Oh, so that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? No. She kept the same smile. Why not? Because next bus only comes in a week. I decided not to inquire how the troop leader managed to get there and back, but I would get no answer anyway. All this time, Slavia was standing next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, we need to find a, uh, find a uniform for you. Oh, am I going to get one of your, like, girls' uniforms? <laughs> I presume I'm still a guy. <laughs> I'm still my person. I feel as though he would have reacted to that if I wasn't... Uh, that didn't happen. I've got absolutely no desire to put on a pioneer shorts or wear that ridiculous red neckerchief. However, wearing winter clothes in summer isn't a great idea either. R right, thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange that someone's wearing a coat and winter boots in such heat. Radio! I'll be off then, and you can get yourself acquainted with the camp. Don't forget to come to dinner the in the evening. Having said that, she walked out of the cabinet. Ah, uh, cabin. No, walked is not the right word. She rushed out. I ended up alone with Slavia. I must go too. I've got things to do. Take, uh, take a walk. Look around the camp a bit. See you in the evening. There is no threat or catch to this reality then, as embodied by Slavia, and it becomes more and more appealing. But for the first time today, I realized it was not awfully hot. It was awfully hot here. Although, obviously, my winter clothes were to blame for that. I took off my coat and dropped it on the bed. 
pull, uh, my pullover followed it, and I was wearing only the shirt. That's much better. All I could do now was follow their advice and go looking around the camp. I'll try to find something out in the meantime. Passing the local residential district, I saw a pioneer guy coming my- Oh my goodness, there's another male here? Oh god, oh, what am I gonna do? Oh, oh my goodness, males. What do I do with males? I will say, I'm finding this very interesting overall. There's a bit of a mystery to it, and, um... Uh, the main character is a bit eccentric, I think. Um, he can rant a lot, and uh, it's not the easiest on me speaking it, but it's the story's pretty interesting so far. The art's not as distracting as I feared it would be, but especially from that opening, but... So far, I, I, I like where this is going so far. I'd like to see where it goes farther. And it really was a pioneer guy, not a pioneer girl. Apparently, there are even men in this kingdom of Amazons. Huh. You're new here, so you must be Semyon, right? How do you know? <laughs> everyone on, everyone knows already. I'm Electronic by the... What the fuck is that sort of name? The real one, you can call me that. Electronic was a robot character appearing in popular Soviet film and book series. He looked exa uh, he looked like an exact copy of a school kid called Sergei Chizkov. Chesikov. Chizikov. I don't know. Electronic, the real one. Things were going from crazy to completely insane. Alright. Ulyana just calls me cheesy. Cheesy. On toast with mushrooms? Because my last name is Cheesikov. I... see. Let me show you around. Uh, I, you know what? Mm, I should give him a different voice than my own. And he seems like a bratty little kid, so I'm gonna give him this voice. I accepted his offer, and it would have taken much longer to get to know the place alone. Fine, let's go. We ended up at the square again, as if the place was all there. Is this? Yeah, as if this place was all there is to the camp. Lena was sitting on one of the benches reading some book. Electronic was confidently approaching her. <laughs> Hello, Lena. Nice to uh, meet the new guy, Semyon. He started briskly. Hello? Well, you could say we've already met in a way. Yes. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and went back to reading, as if notice, uh, not noticing that we were still here. Alright, let's go. I was first surprised that meeting this girl reduced, was reduced to a couple of words, but then I thought that it was better this way. Electronics' vigorous activity did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Let's go. Next we came to a building, which I instantly identified as a canteen. And this here, I know, this is where you consume organic food. Yeah, something like that. On the canteen's porch stood the unfriendly girl who hit me in the back earlier. At the sight of her, my choking mood vanished in the blink of an eye. Really, now is not the best time to pulling this guy's leg, even though he is quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out what's going on, uh, what's what here, or at least where I am. Here? Over there? That's a Lisa... long name. Be careful around here. He spoke in a whisper. Va, me, uh, va means two in Russian. The whole nickname sounds exactly like a 2CH in Russia, a reference to the late 2CH.RU anonymous image board. Okay, so it's like 4chan, just uh, uh, 2 chan or something. Uh, okay. Don't ever call her as Vacha. She doesn't like that. What did you say? What did you call me? She must have heard him. In the blink of an eye, Alisa jumped down the porch and dashed towards us. Alright, you'll manage from here onwards. Electronic took off on his heels. Do nothing. I'm just kidding. Nope. This is his problem. This is his problem. Alisa, running past, stopped for a moment and growled. I'll deal with you later deal with me. What did I do wrong? I added a force guilty smile to my words. But what am I guilty of? She made no reply and carried on chasing Electronic. Electronic's such a freaking weird name. Ah, looks like I have to kill time alone waiting for dinner. I decided to go east. Ah, uh, at least in that direction. 
where uh, at least in the direction where east would be in my world. Do you do you think north, south, east have changed in this world? Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. Soon after, I found myself at a soccer pitch. Ha ha ha! A game was in full swing there. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood and teen years, I was not a bad player and even thought of going professional. But a few injuries in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of an uncertain chance in the game. Wait, wait, what did you say? You thought of going pro- no. You thought of going professional. That means goddamn shit to a person actually going professional. Kids of different ages were running around the pitch. I could see a boy of about 10 and a girl of about 14 years old. A girl. Hey, that's- that's Oyana. Alright, so she plays soccer. What's surprising? What's so surprising? She seemed like a rather restless one after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she noticed me. Hey, you! Oyana shouted. Wanna play? I didn't know how to answer. On one hand, running for about 10 minutes is no big deal. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be my final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather in the first place. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig. And playing barefoot and without jeans was simply unethical. <laughs> the barefoot, maybe not so much. Uh, maybe another time, alright? I shouted in response and turned, and turned around and walked back. I was followed by Yana's screams about my pants, or about me being a pansy or something like that. Evening was falling, making me feel tired and empty after a, day's waste, after a day wasted with no real purpose. I came back to the square, sat down on a bench, and gave an exhausted sigh. I better sit here and wait for dinner. After all, it's easier to search for answers when you're not hungry. They do give food to, uh, they do give food to the people here, yeah? You know, it's curious how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. For example, I feel hungry now, so I could care much less about where I am or what's happening to me. Could great people also be affected by this? And in that case, how did Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? I can only conclude I am not a great person, and it does not really matter which mechanism I serve as a gear, uh, I serve as a gear in society, the Matrix, or a weird pioneer camp. My thoughts were interrupted by a sound of bells chiming in from a loudspeaker on a light pole. It must be the dinner call. I headed towards the canteen. Yeah, it was a good thing that I now know where it was. Olga was there, standing on the porch. I stopped and looked closely at her, as if I were expecting something. She looked back at me for a while, but at last came closer. Semyon, what are you waiting for? Come in already. Uh, guess nothing bad can happen if I go with her? My stomach backed me up here. Ah, there's so many people! Why are there so many people? This isn't like an isolated camp where there's only like me and like a dozen girls or something like that. No, it seems like there's actual people here. That's weird. So many guys not wearing shorts. If I get shorts now, oh man, I'm going to be pissed. The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like uh, a canteen. I'd had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. This one was exactly the same. Maybe just a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables, glazed tiles on the wall, the floor, and sophisticated tableware, and the occasional crack. I guess that's what a canteen in a pioneer camp is supposed to look like. Samyan, wait a moment. We'll find you a place to sit. She looked around the place. Oh my goodness, long name. Um, Oyana, hold it right there. Ogo shouted at. Oh no, Elisa. Elisa. Shouted at Elisa, who was passing by. What? What's up with your clothes? Anything wrong with them? Indeed, her attire was somewhat provocative. Get your uniform nice and neat right now. <laughs> all right, all right. Elisa got her shirt right and walked past, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. I didn't do anything. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. So, where can we find you a place to sit? There weren't a lot of free seats. Go over there, next to Uyana. Of course, oh, of course. Of course she has an empty seat next to her. Uh, maybe I... Yeah, it's fine, the food's already on the table, too. Wait, why? I had no other choice but to accept. In common Russian language, 
Coletta. Cutlet is a minced meat fried. Okay, just types of food. I don't really care that much about that specific. Of course, there was probably, uh, there was the probability that the cutlets were poisoned with Carrere, the mashed potatoes were generously seasoned with arsenic, and the glass filled with an excellent antifreeze instead of compote. Uh, compote. Compote? Compote? I don't know. But it all looked so tasty that I had no chance to resist. Hey. Uh, what do you want? I replied rather rudely to Ayana, who was sitting next to me. <laughs> Why didn't you play football with us? Because my clothes said I, pointing at the source of the problem. Oh, all right then, eat. Oh, oh, was she, if I had the right clothes on, was she gonna like beat me up or something for not playing with her? However, there wasn't much left to eat. My cutlet was missing from the, you, you, okay. There's one thing you don't mess with, it's my food. Only she could have done it. No, more precisely, none but Oyana could have done it. Give me back my cutlet. In my family, you snooze, you lose. It can cost you a cutlet if you're careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Oh, this is important. This is important. I looked at her menacingly and was about to reach out my hand. See, I don't have it. And indeed, Uyana's plate was empty, and it seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlet. Take it easy, we'll work something out now. <sighs> oh, this is bad as that guy taking my money and trails. She grabbed my plate and ran off. I will never forgive you. I will never forgive her. There was no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me here, they could have done it in a much easier way. About a minute later, Oyana returned and handed me a plate with steaming hot cutlet. Okay. You're okay now. You're okay. That's a small cut. Is that, that's a sh is that mashed potatoes? Oh my goodness, that's so much mashed potatoes. Here's one for the starving. Uh, thanks. That's all I could say. I was so hungry that my suspicion were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet on my fork and... Hmm, what the fuck are you doing, Oyana? She's messing with me. She's messing with me. Some bug. No, not a bug, an insect. It's got legs and it's wiggling. The plate fell to the floor and broke into pieces and the chair hit me on my leg while falling. I've just liked insects since I was a child, but when these creepy crawlies appear on my plate, that's just way too much. You little. Liana seemed ready for such a twist and was already at the door, laughing as if she had already heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke. Oh my goodness. Never forgive you. Never forgive you. There is no way. I dashed after her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a dozen meters apart, and I felt I could catch this little girl easily ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran out into the forest path, and apparently I can't catch her easily because we ran a pretty far away, and I still haven't caught her. I started to gri uh, gasp for breath. I should have quit smoking, I guess. You smoke? I don't like... Oh, I, I, I really hate smoking, honestly. People can smoke, but I... Please just do it away from other people. Some people just... Like, I like whenever I smell it, it just makes me gag. Oyana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. I simply can't. I stopped and tried to catch my breath again. Night was falling. <sighs> Looks like I'm lost, and it's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night. Better get back to camp. Over, I had absolutely no, cl uh, no clue which way to go. Ah, gotta choose at random. Oh, can I? Can I pick? Let me pick. Ah, fine. I wandered for quite some time to the f in the forest and even thought of crying for help, but I finally saw the camp's fence beyond the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone. I mumbled quietly. On one hand, there's nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't just stay here forever. But on the other hand, it meant someone was driving, because buses do not drive themselves. Or do they? In Soviet Russia, buses drive you! Okay. The world seemed too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation, and a surreal one. Certainly, the driver could have just been off for a snack, and I left too soon, and that's why. In any case, this is not the place for me. Whether that bus drives itself, 
or not was probably an important question, but it was much more important to know where I, uh, how I had gotten here at all, and where here was. The fields of woods stretching out to the horizon had no answers. There's nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd, and alien world. However, at the same time, it was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation and uh, instinct decided to resign from its job, or all this running around the camp and the local pioneers had lulled me so much with a carefree normality that I was simply forgetting what had happened to me just a couple of hours ago. Although I was probably, uh, I probably had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. I just wanted to have a break from it all. And only then I would continue looking for answers, ready and reloaded, and ready to get my cutlet. However, that would be some time later. And uh, uh, what about now? Can I allow myself to relax? It's completely dark, and in any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. I was about, uh, I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Ah, you again. Hello. What are you doing here so late? Oh, Slavia, standing before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. So, you didn't catch Ilyana, didn't you? She smiled. I nodded disappointingly and sighed. No wonder. No one ever has. Ah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found a better use for her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. I didn't have... Uh, you, didn't ha uh, you didn't manage to have dinner after all. Indeed. I completely forgot about my hunger, but after those words of hers hit my stomach, my stomach drew attention to itself by giving a traitorous rumble. Slavia smiled. Let's go then. What, is the canteen still, op a canteen still open? It's alright, I have the keys. The keys? Yes, I have the keys to all the facilities on the camp. How come? Well, I'm something like, I'm something like the camp leader's aide right now. I see. Well, let's go. It was an offer you can't refuse. Free food. Give me food. When we reached the square, Slavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me, but I should warn my roommates that I'll be late. She's, she's so punctual that she'll be worried otherwise. You go on to the canteen, and I'll come in a minute, all right? All right. I really did not expect to find somebody aside from myself there at such a late hour, and that somebody was apparently trying hopelessly to open the door. Oh, without any secrets, without any secret thoughts, I walked onto the porch. Oh. Hi, Elisa. I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while and then said, Don't just stand there, give me a hand or something. Meaning? Help me open the door. Why? Because I want some buns and kefir. I don't know what that is. Dinner wasn't big enough. Um, is that really a good idea? Aren't you hungry yourself, huh? Well, Yana didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. Oh no, I, I get why she always has a a chair open next to her because no one wants to sit next to her because she's a little brat uh, I don't like Ilyana she's pissing me off it's true she didn't it's fine Slavia will come now and what? guess I should have said that I'm off then and you'll pay for this you'll pay for this you owe me two already what? what did I do to you? I did shit to you having said that Alisa uh, disappeared into the night and what was the first one? Ah, crap. Slavia didn't keep me waiting for too long. Is everything all right? Yeah, why are you asking? No reason, it's nothing. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Elisa. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a note of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As for Slavia, she seems to not have noticed anything. Well, nothing that she showed noticing. Or at least she, pretend uh, she was pretending that she hadn't. We entered the canteen. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my savior. Ah. This... I... I'm still not a big fan of the character art. <laughs> uh, my dinner was simple. A few buns and a glass of kefir. I don't know what that is still. No wonder. I bet hungry pioneers finish everything off. However... Even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Slavia sought across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is 
there's something on my face? No, just... Oh my goodness, she's looking directly at the player. Uh... Um, do you... Uh... Oh god. I just had so many thoughts about potential plot twist. She smiled. So, how do you like your first day in the camp? Well, I don't really know. It's silly to ask someone who suddenly found himself in a different reality whether he liked food and canteen, the camp leader, or uh, his hut assigned. His assigned hut. It's alright, you'll soon get used to it. Slavia stared out the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I had no desire to get used to such things. But as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least, she wants to. She wants me to think that she doesn't. Well, all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. Do you think so? She asked without any interest. Wow, this place is so... I want to say retro, but I managed to hold that back. After all, it was retro for me, but what about them? Might be the only kind of life they knew. If the term life was applicable here at all... So, how? She watched me closely. As if something important depended on my answer. I don't know. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely here. I guess you're right. Don't stop looking at me. Stop looking at me. I'm getting sort of creeped out by this. She smiled again. It's very good to th uh, it's very good that you think so. Why? Well, not everybody here likes it. What about you? Me? Yeah. I love it here. It's great. Stop looking at me. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think. Well, I don't really worry. Slavia, uh, Slavia laughed. And this conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to get to. And you're worried yourself. Really? Why do you say so? Well, when someone is chewing so intensely... Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to be more cautious around this girl. But why her in particular? Why not any of the other local inhabitants? Every one of them looked completely normal to me. Every one, um... Precisely normal, like, really normal. So normal it sends chills down my spine and into my marrow. Normal. Not like a neighbor with a power drill in one hand and subwoofer in the other. Not like a bachelor, you mean a subwoofer, but I'm trans, not like a co-worker next to my plan. Oh, okay, it's not even friends. If it's is gonna blah, blah, blah. All of them look normal, as if I was, uh, as I would expect them to be. Their own downsides, but without any superpowers. Slavia was also... cute? I glanced at her stealthily. Not knowing what to say. I, I, I'm sorry, I wanted to show you the camp, but... Uh, but was ran off my feet. Oh, I... I didn't miss anything on my own, I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? Like you staring at the player half this time? She smiled so brightly that I had to drop eyes... Uh, I dropped my eyes in confusion. Well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay, what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, the canteen, the football field. What about the beach? Just from afar. You really should go there, or let's do it together. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness started to scare me, but then I thought, what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be, and this world looks strange only to me, while for them it is normal? Maybe I was thrown into the past. Yeah, that would explain a lot. But then on a, then it would explain a bit, but it wouldn't explain how they knew I was coming, how they talked to my parents, and even if I was like replacing some random other person, um, even if I was like just replacing some random person in the past, like I showed up and they thought I was this person, how would I? It's like I feel maybe they talked to that guy's parents and this guy just disappeared or something. I don't know. Can I ask a stupid question? No. <laughs> jerk. Slavia smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Can you find your way back to Olga by yourself? Of course I can, but why should I go there? She'll settle you in with someone. Oh, it's gonna be electronic, isn't it? Oh, uh, electronic. It's gonna be electronic, isn't it? What for? Probably this question seems stupid, but Slavia burst into good nature laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? That makes sense yeah that definitely makes sense fine i'll be off good night night it's strange that she left in such a hurry a bundle of keys left in the door lock caught my attention i'm going to catch up with slavia but where does she live 
Knocking on every door during the middle of the night didn't sound like a bright idea. Logically, I should take the keys and hold on to them until I see her next, or I could give them to Olga. Let's just think about this. I mean, what is the possibility of, like, I... Bad things are going to happen if I leave the keys, because we already saw someone trying to break into stuff. <laughs> I better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow, because who knows what happens here at night. Such thoughts gave me chills. It's me who needs to be more careful here in the first place. The night, though dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear chirping crickets, the songs of the night birds, and rustling trees from everywhere. A sudden desire to follow Slavia's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of the unknown bronze builder of communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that happened today. That was all my constructive mood could offer. Here was a much bright it was here was much brighter than the canteen. Tardy pioneers were running by, so this place didn't seem scary at all. But summer cat girls? I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. Honestly, I still sort of think it's a dream. It still strikes me... Because he was having the dream before and it still had this location. And he recognized this place from his dream too at, at the beginning. And there's this there was a girl in the dream. I mean, I, I feel as though that's probably it. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl. Reading a book. Hey, Lena. I decided to move closer and talk. She was the only new person I had met here without exchanging even a few words. Hi, uh, what are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped. Oh, sorry, I... I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, never mind. She blushed and stared at the book again. So, what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. It is supposed to be a very good book. A good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I hadn't read it, but I think that such literature suits her very well. Lana didn't seem to be interested in continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you. No. She answered while looking at the book. Can I sit beside you for a while? What are you... When did this guy get so much balls? <laughs> Samyan. That's really upfront for you. Uh, why? And really, why? Maybe just because I was very tired, and having company is better than being alone. Maybe I wanted to try to find something out from her. I carefully examined Lena. But no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed to. Feel free. But if I'm bothering you... No, you're not. I can leave, just say. Everything's alright. Okay then. I sat at the end of the bench carefully. After such an intense talk, staying here was the last thing I wanted, but it wouldn't be nice just to stand up and leave. Ah, it really didn't go well, did it? Lena hasn't answered anything. It seems I made a fool out of myself. But if Uyana was here, she'd have a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? I recalled Slavia's question and thought it would be a good start to the conversation. Yeah. She smiled slightly. I guess I like it too. Lena definitely isn't the very uh, isn't very sociable, and probably can't carry on a meaning uh, meaningless conversation as easily as Slavia. But there's something about here that attracted attention, like a momentary glimpse of reflection in the glass on a rainy on the oh my goodness uh, on a rainy autumn evening, which makes you turn around and stare into darkness, searching for something that you saw out of the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it was, but it felt so tempting. Lena was still reading the book, without paying any attention to my presence. I had no intention of asking her anything about this camp or this world in general. Beautiful night. Yeah. How in the world would you start- what could you, how in the world could you even start a conversation with her? It's late. I have to go. Yeah, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There's something strange about this girl. At first glance, she is typically shy and modest pioneer girl, but the mystery of Lena took its own place in the massive list of mysteries about this camp I started to put together in my head. A lazy evening. There's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed towards Olga's cabin. The light in the house was on. Uh, hey, 
Hello, Semyon. You're quite late. Yep. I just went for a walk to look around the camp. All right. You'll be sleeping here. She pointed her finger at one of the beds. Right here? I was a bit surprised. Yeah, is something wrong? We're out of free cabins anyway. The camp leader smiled, but I rather think it was just out of politeness. You do want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? There was a clear emphasis on the word decent. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. Don't you mind it, mademoiselle? She looked at me oddly. What a surprise. With surprise and some offense in her eyes. A pioneer should respect their elders. Olga said strictly. Of course he should. No one argues with that. I blathered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also? She stared at me. Under such a gauge, even Mithril forged by the best dwarf masters of the deepest dungeons would melt. Should I what? What's up, Dutz? <laughs> Goodness, what did you do? What are you doing? You know, the madam was well. Uh, Mademoiselle thing wasn't that bad, but the Toots thing. Oh my goodness, she's gonna slap you. Annoyance and a lack of understanding made me raise my voice. You must address adults appropriately. Yes, of course, there's a lot of strange things here. But this girl's just a couple of years older than me. Maybe even younger. But I decided not to argue. But just a few minutes ago, I would never have called her an adult. I have to admit that she also gi uh, she was also given a strong character. And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am. I mumbled. That's much better. That is how a decent pioneer should, uh, should conduct himself. And now it's time to sleep. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent nor indecent pioneer. Just yesterday, I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? If you don't want to, we'll have to make you. This is the motto Olga was probably going to use. Ah, uh, I'm not really sure how this is gonna go. I climbed into one of the uh, bed. I climbed into the bed and closed my eyes, only to realize how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully, as if my brains had started a night shift, and they seemed to be aimed at more at rolling steel than working on something more sensitive. The bus flew through my mind. And the square with the monument. The canteen full of pioneers. And the malicious face of Iana. Slavia. In her bikini. Of course, that's the way you remember her. <laughs> Lena. And even recalling Elisa didn't give me too much of a negative feeling. What if I'm here for good? Oh, God. What if this game doesn't even have answers? What if it just does this over and over again? That's not a positive. That's definitely not a positive. I was having a dream. It seemed like I was in some kind of vacuum, but nothing around me. And not only around, I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. I suddenly heard a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded so familiar. The voice was whispering something gently as if soothing me, and then I realized it was the voice of the strange girl from the bus. The girl from the dream. What is she trying to tell me? Who is she? I woke up. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. After stretching lazily in the bed and uh, yawning, I started to recall the previous day. In a few seconds, all of its events passed before my eyes, the bus to camp the local inhabitants. No, that's just wrong. No, that's wrong. Not the situation, not me being here. It was wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. Because yesterday, I fell asleep here just like that. Before that, I chatted nicely with the local pioneers and managed even to crack a few jokes. How could I act like that in such a situation? I should be frightened, startled by even a little rustling. I should avoid all contact with the potentially hostile creatures. The last day events were getting hazy, like I had a hangover. This really feels like a morning after a heavy drinking party. Yesterday's natural, flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning. A grotesque illustration from the Divine Comedy. Yes, it's just like that, and I can't change the past now. Then again, I'd probably assess the situation and was acting accordingly. I glanced around trying to figure out whether I had, thrown, uh, had been thrown somewhere else, but Olga's cabin looked the same as yesterday. 
Everything seemed to be in place except for the pioneer uniform, which is hanging from the bedhead. Oh, crap. Do I have shorts? Oh, I'm gonna guess that this is my side, considering the fact that there's a bra here. And this actually seems like male shoes and stuff. Or, you know what? Neither side. Uh, this side looks like it's occupied anyways. I fumb uh, fumbled it. Uh, I fumbled with it in distrust and tried it on. At least it's better than walking around in winter clothing. I wish I could see myself. But I look like a clown. And for that, I needed a mirror. At least a tiny one. Mirror. Yep, I finally found one on the wardrobe door. Holy! I looked at the new pioneer, uh, at the newfound pioneer and jumped away in surprise. There was some sort of teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. Where did the weak stubble go? Where were the bags under my eyes, the slouch, the deathly fatigue on my face? It seemed as though I had not been thrown back in time or a parallel reality, but instead had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right there, that's sim real simple. Such things happen every day. I took a closer look at the stranger and only realized that it was actually me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from uh, between my school and university years. Well, at least that's something. There you go. A person in an extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader noticed it, and last night she told me off for addressing her without proper respect. I <laughs> not screw that. I doubt my appearance affects anything else. If the clock was not lying, breakfast was long over. Oh well, I'll try to find something in the canteen. It worked out well yesterday with Slavia, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. <laughs> the sun was shining brightly outside, a light breeze was blowing. A beautiful summer day. I had not felt so good in the morning after several years. All problems were gone, vanished in clouds that were white as snow. Olga came out of nowhere. Good morning, Semyon morning. I smiled, doing my best to show that no matter what, my morning was indeed good. You only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you up, but breakfast... Uh, never mind. Here, take this. She handed me something wrapped in paper. Judging by the oily stains, it had to be sandwiches inside. Oh, thank you. Now, go wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. Olga quickly ran into the house and came out to shove a small bag into my hands. Inside, I found a toothbrush, soap, a small towel, and something else. I did not look too closely. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy. Let me, uh, 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 let me do your neckerchief properly this time. This first time. Yours is askew. Uh, you should do it yourself once you learn how to. Do we have to? I'm going to wash myself now. Yeah, right. I could get hooked on the tap and, sh and it strangles me. Oh, it could get hooked on the tap and it could strangle me. Fine, later then. And don't forget about the lineup. Pencils, papers, drawing lines. You don't forget about such things. What lineup? What do you mean, what lineup? She frowned. It's Monday today. Weird. By my approximation, it should have been Sunday. And then again, a shift in the day of weeks is hardly the worst thing. Usually, we have lineups early in the morning before breakfast, but it's Monday today, and we're having it at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. All right, but where? At the square. Where else? There's no reason to argue. I head to the bathing place. Ah! <laughs> oh, that looks absolutely <laughs> like a horrible place to bathe. Ah! Uh, I knew I could forget about separate showers and a toilet, but the sight of this malfunctioning symptom of decaying socialism. A funny turtle with a tin shell, Paul taps in a ceramic belly. I felt sick. I was not a squeamish person, but nevertheless, I was standing uh, there. I realized that some minimal level of habitual comfort, which I found it troublesome to do without. I feel like that when you lose things that you thought were ordinary and common, you suddenly understand how it, uh, essential they were. Ah, screw this, as if I have a choice. The water was ice cold. While washing my hands was not an issue, washing my face and my mouth became a big problem. There's no toothpaste in the bag which Olga gave me. I could brush my teeth out it, but there's a small round box wrapped in the towel. Tooth powder. Cute. One point for being somewhere in the past. I wash myself quite quickly, and also, also due to the ice cold water. 
someone was coming quickly and more like running towards me, and you know what? This is probably a good place to stop for today because something's clearly about to happen. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure what's happening so far. He might have been just thrown back in time, but you'd think if he had done this before, maybe he's blocking out of his memory from some point in his past, and his dreams are all about him remembering this time. Maybe he was thrown back into the past, or maybe he's dreaming about him being, him being younger and being in this situation. Then again, it also sounded like he grew up in a time where if he was at that age, this stuff wouldn't have even been around, so... I'm not sure. Uh, not enough information to go on yet, but it's an interesting story so far. And... I'm curious where it's gonna go. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, we all get to keep enjoying it. So, have a good one, and drive safely. <laughs>